Hi, welcome to New Identity Ministries. We are here tonight to discuss receiving from God. Oh, wow. That is going to be a great... Uh, wonder, that's going to be wonderful, how to receive from God. What am I going to receive from Him? Well, we're going to receive everything that He has for us. We can receive the free gift if we go to New Identity Ministries. That's New ID and Me. Uh, dot com. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of work put into this site, and you can come and visit us there and receive your free gift. That's new ID in me dot com. We'd love to keep in contact with you. We also have a blog that's mm -hmm. going out on our daily studies, and uh, we should be uh, beefing it up a little bit more and go doing more live, uh, mm -hmm. more live videos. Mm -hmm. So, um, which would be great. Um, oh, so, what is uh, the lesson today? Well, we're talking about, again, how to receive from God. The importance of knowing how to receive all that God has for us. Okay. And it is an important lesson because God has already done so much for us. And I love this scripture. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 tell us, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. we got to really think about that scripture a little bit, because it's, there's a lot of scriptures that have become so familiar to us. We just kind of gloss through it, and so I think that's an important one to check. To tear apart. So let's just go on though and read a little more of this lesson. I think it, it's going to explain it. There, there basically are two groups in the body of Christ today. Those who emphasize grace, what God does, and those who emphasize faith. Okay, so, um, wow, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. The first group te preaches that everything is totally up to God. They talk a lot about the sovereignty of God. And say whatever he chooses, and they, it remind, it's that song, Que sera, sera, what will be, will be. And the second group teaches, no, you have to do this, and you have to do that. And this and that, and this and that, and this and that. Because, you know, if you don't do this and that, and this and that, and this and that, you don't have any faith. So it becomes a thing about works. And you're focusing on your works then to receive from God. And both of those are wrong. They're like sodium and chloride. You take them separately and they both are deadly but you blend them together and they become salt and salt is necessary it even helps our icy roads doesn't it it's good for our body so you have to have a little bit of salt um, let's read Ephesians 2 5 it says by grace we have been saved. So, we're not saying that it's wrong to say that we're saved by grace. But it's not grace alone that saves us. And it's important to understand that. Because God has done so much for us by grace. And for us to receive what he has already done, we have to have a positive response. And to what he's already done. And that's what's called faith. There has to be that combination of both grace and faith. And it's the combination of those two that create, that enable us to receive what God has already provided for us by grace. So, Titus 2.11 is another scripture. It says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. 
men and women. So grace is what God does for me. It's what, it's, that's his part. It's something that was done for me before he ever existed. Before I ever existed, I should say. And the same is true for you. Grace is something that God did for you before you ever existed. Isn't that something? Wow. It, grace has nothing to do with us. It is unmerited, unearned, and undeserved. But it still is grace, and it's towards us. If grace is something that God does, and if grace alone saved people, guess what? Everyone, ever, 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 would be saved. Everyone. Because Titus 2.11 again says that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to everyone. God's grace is the same toward everyone. He's exactly the same toward every person who has ever lived. So that makes you wonder, then how come so-and-so got healed and I didn't? How come so-and-so got this and I didn't? Well, that sometimes that, that's true, too. Sometimes that question comes along. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll get to the answer on that, won't we? Yeah. Yeah, I love the answers on this because it, it helps me to uh, renew my mind. So this way, when I am in a moment that I need my body to speak to my body, then um, I can um, and watch it, uh, uh, the finished work of Jesus happen. And it happens quicker sometimes. And it really doesn't matter the time frame on it. It's already happened. Mm -hmm. But Diana will get into that some more. Right. And um, so we're renewing our mind in the Word today. And the faith of God that you already have is going to rise up on the inside of you. You're probably feeling pretty good at that point mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. Absolutely. The problem is we think that when we see something happen, all of a sudden, God did something or provided something that he hadn't provided before. God's grace, though, is the same toward everyone because it's not based on or tied to what anyone does. And this is not commonly understood. Most people believe that it's their performance that earns them extra weight with God. Oh, if I mm -hmm. take out the garbage... Do I? Well, that's uh, with your why. Um, oh. <laughs> okay. Those are bonus points. <laughs> bonus points. No, that's just expected. <laughs> so do I have to have to work for it? No, 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 no. You don't work for God's grace. Only for your wife. Yeah. Most people believe that it's their their performance, but the truth is the moment we begin relating God's blessings to anything we've done ourselves, we have just voided grace. Yeah. Oh, wow. Don't want to void grace. No. Because we've made God's blessings and the manifestation in our lives proportional to something that we've done. Now, what do you mean by manifestation? Because some people, you know, don't know that lingo. How would you describe manifestation? Um, it happening mm -hmm. in your life. Right. Yeah. Seeing the yeah. complete some healing. Some of this Christian Seeing lingo the... I don't understand so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we just need to make it a little simple. So, yeah. And so... It, it, we'll see it happen. Right. But you have to understand that grace is something that God did for you, independent of you, before you were ever born. In fact, I love what uh, the so, Bible says. So you said in Ephesians 2 8, it was by grace I was saved. So I got that. Through much. faith. Well, we'll get there. Mm hmm. Okay, so it's by grace I was saved. Right. And I didn't have to do anything to deserve it. I didn't have to uh, um, uh, wash the car. No. 
now, or uh, work at the um, the food kitchen, feeding you know, the poor. Would you know. that get me there? You might feel better about yourself, but it's not going to. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing to do, <laughs> but that won't get me saved. No, it will not get you saved. That's a part of the fruit. Right. Oh. Right. Right. In fact. But grace is something, the Bible says, that before God even created the world, he saw, he, Jesus was slain. In his eyes, he is the master architect. So this was all prepared because he knew when he gave us free will mm -hmm. that it was going to happen that way? Mm -hmm. I'm glad the grace was back then. Well, and it's still today, aren't we? Even in the Old Testament, there was a lot. Of, see, grace came by Jesus Christ. The law came through Moses. Right. Not God. Oh, well, yeah, it did. Did it? Yeah. The law came through Moses. Yeah, it came through Moses from God. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, mm -hmm. but before then, it was grace. Right. Oh. Right. So faith is basically, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 is telling us that grace is basically everything God has already done for us independent of our performance and faith is our positive response to wow. what he has already one more time done one more time very slow but I, I like hearing that mm -hmm. and, and this is really important right here because this is how you were saved mm -hmm. yeah. grace is everything that God has already done for us independent, without us being involved, independent of us, and faith is simply our positive response to what God has already provided through grace. Wow. If I had a runner for me, I'd tell him to run around the house one time. That's <laughs> That's so right. That, that is by grace I was saved through faith. And you know that faith wasn't even mine. Right. It was a gift. That was the measure of faith. Mm-hmm. Wow. So we got, he gave us the faith to get saved. And so that free will is in, intact. Oh. So okay. that means we either say yes to it, mm -hmm. to being saved, or no. Mm -hmm. That's simple. Man, it was so simple. Even I got saved. Peter got saved. <laughs> yes, I, I, was, I wasn't so easy to say. The Holy Spirit really had to get a hold of me. Well, that's because you but, were intellect. Yes. You were a teacher, and you really needed to know why. I was just enjoying mm -hmm. because yeah. I was. <laughs> yes. You know, so, yeah. Yes. Well, listen to this. God by grace. God by grace has already provided everything for you before you ever needed it. That is incredible. And what that should do is give us confidence that no matter what we see in this world today, no matter where we are, that God, by grace, has already provided for us. Amen? Amen. Take, for instance, salvation. Many people think you have to ask God to forgive your sins. And for Jesus to come into your heart to receive salvation. That's not what the thief on the cross did. Well, let me just finish. Yeah, he, he, he slid right in there. That's right. They will pray, <laughs> Jesus, would you please come into my life and tell others, just ask Jesus to come into your life. That's not what salvation is, though. Listen to this. Acts 16.30. We're going to Acts 16.30. That's right. Write this down. This is just this is like the stable of your salvation. Paul is always good in Ephesians and in Romans. Romans eight will teach you about your salvation. And when you get this lesson tonight, I'd go to Romans eight and camp there for a little bit too. But these scriptures just meditate and ponder on them, think about them, and. The, and I, the, these scriptures I think on for years, and they just, it just helps me, that my mind, to be renewed and understand it is nothing that I have done. 
So wrong thoughts, imaginations, and and <clears throat> sometimes you uh, will act on those thoughts and imagination. Is it sin? Yes. Does God count that against you? No. But it, what it does, it just gives you a spiral down in your mind. That's where we're, we're dealing with tonight. We're dealing with the areas of um, how God saved us. Mm -hmm. And it was by grace. And I have, I have one little thing I can read. Would okay. You, would you like me to read it? Sure. Yeah. Um, um, <clears throat> Ephesians 2, 8, 9 states that the basis of our salvation is grace. Mm -hmm. That is. God's undeserved, unmerited favor towards us mm -hmm. as expressed in providing redemption through Jesus Christ. The means of God saving us is through faith. Through faith we accepted God's free gift of salvation that was provided by grace. So, we are saved by grace through faith. Amen. Did that help a little bit more? I hope so. Did that help you? Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's read. That was really good. Let's read Acts 16, 30 and 31. Can I get brownies? Um, with a little bit of something in them? No. Special. No. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> no. She's talking about my wife. When you hear her talk, it's really, really gentle. You know, she was saved. She was a Mormon one time and was saved. Mm -hmm. She belonged to the Women's Society. So the way Relief she, society. she relieved society. Right. And, um, and I had to extort her to marry me. Anyway, Acts 16, 30 through 31 <laughs> is a scriptural <laughs> example. Yeah. Acts 16, and I was forgiven. <laughs> Acts 16, 30 through 31 is a scriptural example of someone receiving salvation. Paul and Silas were in the Philippian jail, and the jailer came to them and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Well, and guess what? They did not answer by saying, ask Jesus to come into your life. He's the dude that puts you in the stocks. They didn't say, he didn't say, repent of your sins and quit doing this and that. Mm -hmm. They simply responded in verse 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will be saved. You know, he didn't say, can you please tend to the whippings on my back from the last beating I got? They had open wounds. They were in, mm -hmm. Some of them were in stocks. It was damp and, and musty down there. He was so on fire for God. Mm -hmm. that, that That's the fire of God. See, Believe yeah. on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Didn't he say you and your family in one? In one verse, it, it is somewhere, but somewhere let's say, yeah, yeah. isn't that one? Where was it, John? It says, thou shalt be saved in thy house. Oh, in thy that house? Verse. You know, that was a yeah. word of knowledge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. That was a word of but knowledge. But believe what? He, he, was, his, he was beaten, and he was yes. getting words of knowledge and bringing people to the Lord. Paul really was thinking about um, salvation, people's salvation. Amen. And even the jailer, the one that is going to put him back in the stocks again. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. I never thought about it that way before. Yeah. There's something to think about. So Paul wanted to convey to the, the, the jailer. The sailor, right, the jailer, that believing on the Lord Jesus Christ was how you got saved. Didn't he have to say his sins? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Believe what, though? Oh. It's not just believe that Jesus existed mm. or that Jesus came to earth. Mm. Is Jesus... that what this next holiday is about? Yes. Anyway, let's keep going. 1 John 2.2 2 says... He's a good teacher, right? He is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole oh, wow. world. Jesus didn't die only for the people he knew so, except him. So, if you're watching but tonight, everyone. the only thing you have to do is believe mm -hmm. on the Lord Jesus. And you will be saved.
saved. Or call upon the name of the Lord, mm -hmm. and you will be saved. Mm -hmm. Wow. Listen that, to this. That, that, comes, your mind. that comes across a lot of people's doctrines. Yeah, well, you know, listen, this, this, I hope you don't get mad at us. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus died for every sinner who has ever lived on this earth. And he died for our sins 2,000 years ago. So it's finished. Long before we ever committed That's them. That's all we have to do is enter in. Long before we ever committed them. 2,000 years before. The Lord's not waiting until we ask him, please come into my heart. To forgive us of our sins. He's already done it. Wow. That That's is awesome. a radical truth. Yeah, it is. God forgave our sins before we existed. Before we were ever born. And her, the provision was already there. I'm too. not 2,000 years old. <laughs> no, you're older than that because he made your frames in the gap. <laughs> But in the so. flesh, <laughs> we don't really know how old we are. We know how old. You know, he says, before your frames were made in the depths, I knew you. Yeah, yeah. He says, I knitted you in your mother's womb. Isn't, doesn't that give you peace? You know, I was reading and studying. It says, God is not, God is a God of order. And when we get things out of order, um, it creates confusion, and he's not the God of confusion, wow. he's the God of peace. <clears throat> and so, we can always tell if we're in peace, we're receiving words from God and it's giving us peace, or if it's creating confusion. Yeah. Yeah. That's not from God. But God Just keep hanging out, hang out with us, and that yes. will lead to, um, <laughs> we guarantee it, because... Um, we know that. And it takes time to renew your mind yes. to who you are in the spirit. God forgave our sins before we ever existed, before we were born, before we could ever possibly commit one of them. God forgave us. So basically that saying sin is a non-issue with God. So we're not saved by grace alone? No. We are saved about by faith, grace. Am I saved by faith alone? No, you need them both. It's like either one is dangerous. Grace by itself I heard it this leads way. to sovereignty of God, thinking, God, there's mm -hmm. nothing you can do. Yeah, I think you want me to talk about that one. Mm -hmm. Sodium by yeah. itself will kill you if you eat it. Mm -hmm. Chloride will kill you mm -hmm. right, if you eat it alone. right? Mm -hmm. But if you take sodium and chloride, we have salt. Right. And you can put that in the food and it tastes good, right? It's the same thing, like you're saying, between grace and faith. Right. We need both of them to be saved. We need to understand so what God has done us. for us. So we, we were equipped with that faith mm -hmm. and free will to receive it by grace. Wow. Right. That's awesome. Isn't that beautiful? You know, so don't harden your heart. He's, he's, a really right. good, he's really a good person to hang out with. He's a lot of fun. Yes, he is. He loves us unconditionally. Yeah. He's already forgiven you. Yeah. Already. I just had to take some time to find out how much fun he really is. Mm -hmm. You know. But sometimes he'll you know, he'll tell you things before they come and um and that's okay too. You know. So you should be able to handle those things. We'll we'll get into that a little bit deeper. There's today's um this is deep. Mm -hmm. uh, about grace through faith. If and you receiving should say, from God. That one you should just keep that on your your memory. That one is definitely a Joshua one eight. Meditate on it day and night. Keep that and ponder on and think about, chew on it. And um, speak it out and then ask the Holy Spirit to show you some more. Because he will, that's his job. And you could do that at work. Uh, you could do that uh, anywhere. Yeah, what we have to do is believe the gospel. That Jesus has already come, already died, and already forgiven the sins. Is that why we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. It is the too good to be true news. Almost. The, it they, is. They said almost uh, the Jews did, right? The gospel, that's what the gospel means. The so too good to be true news. If you look that up, and that's what it means. The almost right. too good to be true news. John 16, 8. Listen to this. Let's go back a little bit. Well, some people might say if that's true, then everybody's saved, right? 
If all of the sins have already been forgiven, the answer is no. Wow. Because right. grace alone will not save. Grace is God's provision. Wow. That is God's provision. He wrote a book called You've Already... Well, not he, but we have a book called You've Already Got It. That so we that makes it from destination. Right, right, right. People aren't going to miss heaven for their sins. You know, sin, it says it'll never separate you from the love right. of God. The sin, the only sin that is going to keep people out of heaven is rejecting Jesus as their personal Savior. And when you read John 16, 8, that's what the Bible teaches. Wow. When the Holy Spirit has come, He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness. Explain that a little bit. I will, and of judgment. You read verse 9, it says, of sin, because they do not believe on me. Okay. That's what the Holy Spirit it's, convicts that's us of. That's it. Not believing on Jesus. Wow. Isn't that something? Yeah. The Holy Spirit's not here to nail us every time we do something wrong. He doesn't convict me? No. That makes us so sin conscious. We don't need he to be so. He doesn't me anymore. Not of your, Same. just the individual. I never sin. heard him say that mm -hmm. since I've been saved since 86. Your never. conscience will prick you. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. innately, inside of us, we all have the Spirit of God. So, it's possibly not even a devil. It's possibly just the unrenewed mind. It's probably mm -hmm. what he's done in the past in the garden, renewing, uh, condemnating. Condemnation came to them in the garden because mm -hmm. of good and evil. So it's he's already hit and run. Right. So we could go, we could believe one way or or the other. And I'm not saying that there's not any activity, demonic activity, but that's not what we're focusing on. We're focusing on tonight is on renewing the mind so we can find out where where it's coming from, that's where. Right. Uh, where sometimes um, there's no there, there's no reason why I should have done. Mm -hmm. But when you think about by grace I've been saved through and not by myself, that means I'm destined to That's one right. place. And that he loves you. To be like Christ. He loves you. Because I'm already you. living in eternity. The mm -hmm. only thing I don't see is where I'm going to be. But... That's to another date. We'll be writing a book on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a lot more um, that you're going to experience um, uh, with Jesus. He's, mm -hmm. he's, he's a lot of fun. He really is. Mm -hmm. And uh, the disciples right. thought so too until, until a Good Friday <laughs> and then Palm Sunday. They had fun there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And then the, the last night at the supper, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. wow, it wasn't a good week after that. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it said that it's better that if I go, that I'll send you the comforter. That's right. And then so, I, 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 so he can be Spirit. with you. It doesn't mean, too, uh, for some of you, it doesn't mean that Jesus can't show up, because he showed up to 500. Mm -hmm. And he's still showing up to people. You heard about this. You know why we hear about it? Because it's the days of increasing knowledge. We have Facebook. Mm -hmm. We have instant news. Mm -hmm. Not fake news. <laughs> right. We right. have instant news now. And we hear of all these miracles that are going on. You know, where the Muslims are turning to Christ because Jesus is showing up to them. See, people are without excuse. It's just the ones that are stuck, we like to help get unstuck. Mm -hmm. Because we, we're we here to tell you that Jesus got a bad rap. He's not judging the world, nor is yeah. he judging you. He, he doesn't, he, he, he loves you. He's not even mad at you. No. Wow. All your sins were already taken care of before you were ever born. Well, that means I can keep on sinning? That's, um, that would be stupid. You know, yeah. that's what Paul was dealing with in Romans 7, right? Mm-hmm. And how did he get he out said, of it? He said, God forbid. Don't. 
You know? Oh, <laughs> wretched man. But, yeah. he, you know, in Romans 7, he was referring to his carnal nature. And we don't have a carnal nature anymore. 2 Corinthians 5, Except 17 says, oh. we are brand new. And that's talking about our nature. Yeah. But but the 2 Bible Corinthians 5, 17. True. For therefore... You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. That means your old self has died. And you're new. Behold. Wow. You say instantly when you receive Jesus, you are a brand new person. As Jesus is in John, you look that up in Google, mm -hmm. so are, so am I. Right. Because he lives inside of me. And that we're going to bring you to the renewance mm -hmm. of your mind to that, to points where you're going to see what you already have. That's right. And you're going to watch it manifest. Amen. That wow. That's going to show up. It's going to become real. That is our desire. That's right. Our desire is to see you blessed. True You're Bible already faith. blessed. To see that you are already blessed. That you really, really, really are already blessed. Yes. Amen? Yes. That you really, really, really are already blessed. Yes, and highly favored. That's right. True Bible faith. Even before my first cup of coffee in the morning. That's right. True Bible <laughs> faith. Listen to this. True Bible faith is simply a positive response to what God has already provided through grace. It's just reaching out and saying, wow, you've already provided for this or you've already provided for that. That's true Bible faith. Faith doesn't move God or make God do anything. Faith is our positive <clears throat> response. I know when I got saved, I responded positively to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And I was willing to leave everything that I ever thought was everything. So you said yes. Mm -hmm. I said yes. There's a lot that have said no, Diana, because the Bible says they're without excuse. See, the Holy Spirit right. is... so. Praying for your partner or your friend That's or right. your children, that is good. See, when Absolutely. the man received Jesus as the Lord, he said, you and your household will be saved when mm -hmm. he, the jailer was saved. So, Jesus is pursuing you. Absolutely. And he is no respecter of person. That means he, he loves everybody the same. That's right. And as Pastor Ron and I were talking... Um, the word says that his eyes go to and fro, fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those who will just look to him. So he's, he's searching. That's right. He's subduing. He wants that relationship. It's, it's like a husband after the Third bride. John 2 says, Beloved, this is his wish for, his, for you, for me, for everyone. I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in hell. You know, this is, you know, sometimes people work for their salvation. They're out there, and they're good people. Mm -hmm. They're going door to door, and they're trying to work for their salvation. And only 144,000 get saved. Man, that means, are you really going to be saved by works? It says here in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it's very simple right. for them too. For the ones that are working for salvation, whether you're a Mormon or Jehovah Witness, for by grace you are saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Wow. Not of works, mm -hmm. least any man should boast. So we get to, to, give, to, to be an ambassador for him. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, if you read down further, you'll see that you're an ambassador for sure. him. So you are chosen to be an ambassador. You don't have to work to be one. And if you receive Jesus as Lord, you will be saved. It says in the Bible, you don't have to work for that. Now, he did command us to do a few things, and there's rewards with that command. Absolutely. So, it's all free will. It's still here. It's not predestination. We're not robots. And it's, you know, and, and I'm happy about that. Because imagine that, well, he'll be saved if God wants him to be saved. That's not the way it is. Mm -hmm. God still has free, people have free choice because that's what God gave them. He loved them so much, he gave them free will. That's right. So, not by works, at least any man should boast. So if, they, if someone knocks at your door, ask them, are you doing 
knocking on the door because God is, um, we, God won't remember you. Jehovah won't remember you. Are you doing this to get brownie points? Like, if you're taking garbage out for your wife? <laughs> <laughs> so, you can ask that question, you, you see, and, um, uh, because it's nowhere in the Bible that you have to work for your salvation. Well, that's right. The thief did work for his salvation. Wait a minute. No, he didn't. What did he do? He just, he worked for it. He, he pushed up on the nails. Oh. <laughs> and he said, Jesus, will you remember me this day? Because he knew Jesus didn't do any wrong. You know why? Because he was a thief. The murderer knew he didn't do anything wrong, but he was just, he was, he was sad that he got caught. He was mad. That he got caught because Barabbas, he looked in Barabbas' eyes and he said to Barabbas, this day I'm going to take your place. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to say too much to Barabbas. Barabbas was with those guys. They hung out together killing Romans. Mm -hmm. I believe it. And um, and if you ask any gangbanger, they'd probably say the same thing. Yeah, they knew what was going on out there. Barabbas was probably at the bottom of the hill calming himself with a little bit of wine, watching his friends get hammered on the cross but looking mm -hmm. at Jesus you might see him in heaven yeah. you see so because when Jesus was on the cross he even said to his captors because you remember that they they plotted that day the day before to kill him and Nicodemus and everybody the council was there Jesus knew because he was God but he also knew by hearsay because the news got out. The only people that really didn't know was the disciples. They didn't understand what was going to go on. and But there was a few others that did. Even the ones that plotted against him to kill him, he looked at them and said, Father, forgive them for they know, what, know, what, know not what they do. Because if he didn't forgive them, no one would have been forgiven. And what he did, he took a little bit of uh, wine vinegar and to his mouth and he said it is finished mm -hmm. you know what was finished by grace you have been saved through faith mm -hmm. and not about yourselves the, you can't even it's a gift of God you can't even work for it mm -hmm. just receive this mm -hmm. goodness it's like this father that you really didn't ever know just enter in in conversation. He'll tell you what to do and how to do it and where to go. And man, the wisdom that you gain is his wisdom because of the mind of Christ you receive. And the double-mindedness will go away. That makes you unstable because you will know the word of God when it comes. And so, um, and then you'll be receiving from God. You know, double-mindedness is only using your mind and God's mind at the same time. When you use the scripture, you use in the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. And and if you don't think about what you, and only think upon the scripture and don't think about why it didn't happen, it's going to. Because that will be natural unbelief. I know I'm feeding you a lot tonight, but I just want to get you used to your salvation. You've been so sowed. That's right. You've been not only saved, well, set free and delivered. Set free. And delivered. Delivered. Mm -hmm. What else? Healed already? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We just, we have this, all this power on the inside. All this power. The only thing that's stopping us, it's what's between our two ears. Amen? That's why it's good to come and gather and listen. Mm -hmm. Amen? Man, I am so happy that you're watching and you're here tonight. Jesus is pleased and happy with you. And he wants to talk to you and you. tell you exactly who you are and what you're meant to be. Because he made you for a purpose. It's basically what you love to do. Basically, that's it. It's too simple mm -hmm. to find out what God, what, uh, God made you for. Well, we'll get on to that a little bit further down the road. I know, do we have any questions tonight? You can uh, ask those questions tonight, and you can PM us, mm -hmm. and we're going to uh, end here, um, but not at the Bible study. 
We're still going to fellowship here, so you are invited to come. Uh, Sunday, we're going to have a wonderful time in worship and mm -hmm. praise and giving thanksgiving to Jesus because he shows up on Sundays. Wasn't that a great piece last week? That was just, man, we didn't want to leave. We could have just sat there for a little while mm -hmm. because Jesus was in the house. Mm -hmm. and, and because we're all activated in the Word of God, then we come into agreement and unity. It only took 12 to change the world. That's right. So mm -hmm. it's not numbers that you boast, but it's always good to see 5,000 get saved like Peter. But I think you had a problem after that. Some people didn't want to see that happen. <laughs> so, so very simple. Tonight, if you haven't received Jesus as Lord, it's very simple. Just say, Jesus, I believe. I believe. Amen. Amen. I believe in you and thank you for this simple way to get to you. Amen. You made it so simple that sometimes people let their theology get in the way of their Bible. And, <laughs> and, um, but that's okay. I did. Sometimes I still do, um, but correction's always good for me because I become wiser still. And mm -hmm. um, so, uh, for the ones that are sick, and we have a few <clears throat> that came out of uh, intensive care, um, and that is, uh, it's, it's serious because mm -hmm. we're going to seriously see you healed. Amen. And that's how serious it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. We get serious about this. Because Jesus was serious when he spoke to the blind man. Mm -hmm. He asked him, what do you see? You know, that wasn't the first time he asked him when he was leaving the city. All right, so he had to get him away from his surroundings. So he walked with him a little bit. <clears throat> the guy was blind from birth. And he asked them, what do you see? And so he really tried to see something. And this is the way that I've seen blind people see. Because they're already seeing in the spirit. Mm -hmm. They can already see. They just can't see with their eyeballs. Some of them don't have eyeballs in their sockets. And, and so, you, so he asked them, what do you see? I see trees like men. Men like... And, and he couldn't see. And Jesus then spoke, eyes open. And he asked him, what could you see? And that's when his eyes opened at that point. You, first you have to visualize that in the spirit that you are already brand new on the inside. You are one-third perfect in your spirit. Because Jesus' is spirit wrapped around your spirit. He loves you. The greatest gift. See, you can have tongues, you can have prophecies. And give them all the time. And disrupt church services because, you, you, because you're getting, you, you know, there's no order there. And, and, uh, okay. and that's okay sometimes. You just, we just need to learn. I've done that before. And, uh, but what we need to learn is how much God loves us. Okay. And how much... He loves us because then the fear goes. You know, where there's, where there's fear, there's torment, and there's no love. If you're feeling that, you need, to, you need to focus on the love of God. For God so loves you mm -hmm. that he gave his life for you. And, that, and, and so what we're going to say right now is because all authority was given to us, we come into agreement. Mm -hmm. And he and and but only Peter was walking around commanding the spirit. He wasn't even saying anything most of the time, and that's what happens around us. We don't even say anything because you're listening and you're believing, and that's all you need to do to be healed. The same faith that he gave you to get saved <laughs> is the same faith you get healed with. Mm -hmm. You don't need. More faith. You have the measure of faith, it says in the Bible. If you write that down and Google it, you'll see it. You, you were given, each man was given the measure of faith. The same amount of faith. To get saved. And that's the same type of faith you use to get healed. Because he loves you. 
Say it. I am healed of the Lord. I'm healed. Well, Psalms oh. 103. Mm -hmm. He's in Psalms and in Isaiah 53. Mm -hmm. By his stripes, I was, I was healed. He was prophesying that. Mm -hmm. First Peter 2:24. Mm -hmm. The righteousness is in the beginning. He, you have right standing with God. Just receive mm -hmm. what he's, he's already done. Remember, mm -hmm. it is finished. Cancers go. Mm -hmm. His kidneys start again. Right. Livers respond. Headaches leave. Word of knowledge has come. Good things happen in your life. The, the Good sleep tonight. I like that one. I'm going to take that. Good yeah, sleep tonight. Good sleep tonight. So... We thank you for joining us tonight. If you need more prayer, um, malaria, I speak to you right now, malaria. Mm -hmm. I curse you right. out of that family right now in the name of Jesus. Malaria, you go in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't see a lot of stuff happen when I was in Africa, but I held myself out not looking with my natural eyes. I could have. I, man, it was all over the place. People were getting healed, separated, and delivered on Palm Sunday. And that wasn't normal, but it is normal. Mm -hmm. You see, and, and people, little girls, were completely, totally restored in their bodies. And she was totally restored. Jesus showed up because he inhabits the praises of his people. He could show up any time. And you could see him, you know. And it, man, it's it's so great to see him. But I was more worried thinking about what I was going to say to 5,000 people, 2,000 people. <laughs> I was more concerned about what I was going to say. And um, But Jesus was in the house, this house. Mm -hmm. He's in your house. Mm -hmm. So you are healed today. You might be feeling pain, so I'll speak to the pain. Pain go in the name of Jesus. Fingernails grow. Mm -hmm. Brain tumor leave. Now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for families. Spirit of witchcraft, drug, drug taking, I curse you now. Right. You go. You spirit of drug taking, witchcraft, pharmacia, I speak to you now to go. In the name of Jesus. Rejection. Leave. In the name of Jesus. Everything that has been stopping people from investments and selling their houses, whatever's stopping it, I say for it to go in the name of Jesus that there'll be a bidding war over your house in the name of Jesus. I, you know, I like saying in the name of Jesus because it's the name above every name. Mm -hmm. It says that the Bible that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord in heaven, on earth, and, under. and beneath the mm -hmm. earth. Mm -hmm. So there's no other name greater. No. So whatever disease that they labeled you with, Jesus' name is greater. And has it has to, to bow. bow. This is the mm -hmm. report that you're going to believe. This report. I love watching people receive uh, what they already have. Amen. And when they see it manifest, they, it brings so much joy mm -hmm. to them. And that's the Father's heart. He wants to see, he loves blessing you. All right. We can go on all night because that's the compassion that we feel when we give the Word of God because of the love of God that is in us. Stay, stay in the Word mm -hmm. and stay close to people that are in the Word mm -hmm. of God. Diana's going to play a little song for you. Just meditate a little bit. Mm -hmm. This is, um, she's going to turn it down a little bit and um, she's going to play a song for you. And the Holy Spirit, it, your heart is opening. And, we, and that's good. Let Jesus in. Let him into those places.